it's more about uh, the business side. And the reason that I think it's important to do this is um, I know some photographers who are awesome shooters. I mean, seriously, unbelievable uh, photos come out of their, their brain and then what they can do with their camera. But they're not successful and they end up out of the business. And part of it is you have to think like a business person who, and then take good pictures, almost more than take good pictures and the business will follow. And so with that in mind, uh, when Deborah and I are talking about concepts of things to talk about, that's kind of where this came from. Um, it is sponsored by 17 Hats. I just asked people here if they knew what 17 Hats was, and most of them didn't. So you will later. It is the uh, back end that I use to run my business. There are other uh, pieces of software or you know services out there that do it, but this is how I uh, run my life. Um, the reason I went to them, uh, they didn't come to me. I went to them and said, "Look, I run my whole business on you guys. You should sponsor this presentation," uh, and they did. Literally, and 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 this is no, uh, I can't say that on live video, can I? But anyway, you know what I'm saying. The real deal is. Without 17 Hats, I could not run my business. And I was telling people earlier today, we were just talking to some of the guys from Canon, and I was telling them about 17 Hats. And literally, I used to like shoot on the side, and I'd forget to build my clients. And so my clients would call me like a month later, like, hey, you shot our bar mitzvah, and we haven't paid you yet. And I'm like, oh, really? Or you sent us an album, and you have an invoice. So it's like, oh, thanks. Thanks for reminding me. Like, that's not a good, good way to run a business. And so a lot of photographers are kind of like doctors. My dad was a doctor, just not good business people. So you got to run it like a business. And so I'm going to tell you how I run mine, how I do things, how I market, and also how I organize myself. I will start by saying I am not a planner. I'm not a super organized person. And so I kind of rely on my calendars, my, my iPhone, everything to kind of keep me organized, but it still doesn't, I need to have it all put together in one place. And that's kind of what this is about. So I started, I had a little bit of fun here. What is the allure of photography? And um, it sounds so romantic, right? Like, they tell people like, what do you do for a living? You're like, I'm a photographer and they go, ooh, cool. Now, admittedly, if I'm on an airplane and they go, like, what do you shoot? And I go, oh, you know, weddings and bar mitzvahs, that they'll put their headphones on and they're like, oh, that's nice. And if I say, oh, I shoot for the US Olympic Committee, I've done the last six Olympics, they're like, seriously? And you know, they just think it's the coolest thing ever. And you know, traveling around the world and getting to do the stuff I do, it is cool. Um, and it's better than a real job. I've done the real job. I was in the corporate world for 30 years. This is clearly more fun. You know, if I had a choice between sitting in a boardroom or flying to Africa and shooting a safari, yeah, I think I'd take Africa. And so it is cool, and it's a fun job. Um, we do get to create art, and we get paid to do it. Um, there are many times when I'm shooting when I will stop and say, I can't believe, even to my client, I'll say, I can't believe I get paid to do this. Um, because it's so much fun. And people say to me, aren't you tired of shooting bar mitzvahs? No, I mean, every kid's different, every family's different, and the dynamics are different, and so I play off of that and have fun. You can be your own boss. That's a good thing and a bad thing. <clears throat> um, it is nice not to have someone telling me to do something that I don't even agree with. Like, why would we waste our time doing that? Just do it. Well, it's my own business. I can do what I wanna do. Hopefully it succeeds. If it doesn't, I learn from it and move on. But it's my own decision, and everything I do is for my own business, and there's something to be said for that. And I, I put this in there because it's kind of funny. We're so cool. <laughs> uh, a lot of people think that being a photographer is really cool. A lot of the kids I shoot for are like, God, I, I want to be a photographer. It's so cool. I thought it's funny. And it can be. Here's some of the common myths about being a photographer. I'm going to make money every month selling stock photography. Guess what? Those days are gone. Um, stock photography is so overloaded now because everybody's walking around with this, taking their own photos, and there's so much photography on there that the pay for selling an image is like sometimes $2. Even though it's being used by some corporation, it might be $5. It's brutal. So it's tough to make a living. In the old days, it was possible to make good living on it. Now, and that's not to say that you can't make money doing it. Uh, I have sold one image for enough to buy a new car. It does happen, but that is not the norm, that's the exception. Uh, people tell me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a website and I'm just gonna make tons of money selling my own prints. Guess what, I sell prints on my website, but I don't sell that many. Not enough to live off of, that's for sure. 
Um, this is my favorite. I'm a, sometimes my, my goal is to become a successful magazine photographer. Or I hear people call me up and say, oh, you shoot for the Olympics. Someday I want to shoot for Sports Illustrated. Well, guess what? Most magazines right now are struggling and they don't even have photographers on staff. They're relying on Associated Press or Getty or maybe they might contract someone to shoot for them. But full-time photographers almost don't exist anymore. It's kind of sad. So don't think that that's what you want to strive for to make a great living. I'm already a good enough photographer. All my friends say so. <laughs> right? And I see this where people will email me and say, you know, can you critique my work? And I'm always straight with people and I will critique it and I'll say, you know, you're not there yet. Don't put a logo that says, you know, John Doe photography or Jane Doe photography if you're not there yet. Wait till you have quality work, then put your logo on it and be a business. But a lot of people say, well, no, I take great photos because all my friends on Facebook say they're great photos. Well, Facebook's not exactly, or your friends aren't exactly the most, the best people to go to. If you're gonna go for a critique, like many of you in this room, better to have someone that's gonna be straight with you and push you than just say that should be a postcard when it's out of focus and crooked and blown out. Um, it's easy to make money as a photographer. It's not true, it's a tough business. I'm not saying you can't make good money because I guarantee you, you can, but you have to do it the right way and it's not easy. Uh, I, I work many times till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Last night I was working to, I was talking to a client at, uh, I think it was almost one in the morning here, but it was still, you know, 10 on the West Coast. So we had a call and she's like, why are you still up? I'm like, well, I gotta get this stuff done. Um, <laughs> this is one I personally fell for. I'm gonna have so much free time working for myself. And I really felt like when I left the corporate world, so I was shooting on the side, and I said, okay, I'm done with the t technology world, and I'm gonna go full-time photographer. I shoot mainly on Saturdays, like weddings and bar mitzvahs and things. That means Monday through Friday and Sunday, I'm chilling. Guess what? That is not the case. Because you're doing a million things. You are actually doing all of these things. So being a photographer is, yeah, you're a picture taker, and yes, you're doing the editing or photo retouching if you choose to do so. I like to do my own retouching. I don't want a service doing it. I want to finish my art. So I, and I'm a control freak. So I want my way. You're a secretary. You're answering the phones. You're doing your own scheduling on your calendar. You're sales. You're dealing with your clients. Social media. You're posting stuff to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, blah, 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 blah. Uh, advertising. You have to decide, are you gonna advertise in that newsletter or in that church brochure, whatever. You're the brand manager. And when I say brand manager, people think of large companies. I actually think about my brand. I got a lot of uh, people who said like, why does you always wear a Jeff Cable photography shirt? And yeah, I've got a hat that I wear. And you went, know, it's not that, it's not an ego thing, it's just like, why not build your brand? When I shoot an event, I wear a shirt that says Jeff Cable photography, and it's not bright white, it's kind of the same color as the shirt, kind of a little bit more muted. But people will look at me and go, oh yeah, you also shot this for somebody. I remember seeing your logo on the picture. Nothing wrong with that. But think about your brand and don't go off your brand. If your brand is that you shoot high quality work, don't go shoot junk and show it. So think about that. You're the purchasing guy. You have to decide what kind of equipment. You know, do you leave your entire paycheck here at B&H? Yes, most of us do. You have to be careful that you're not overbuying or buying the wrong stuff. So you're also doing that. You're the writer. In my case, I blog, but you're also writing stuff on social media. You're writing emails to your client. I'm so anal that when I when we send emails to my clients, I double check to make sure that I haven't misspelled stuff and that punctuation's right because it's part of my brand. I don't want to come across as looking sloppy. When I go to their house to meet with them, I try not to be late because it ruins my brand. I don't want them to think, is this guy going to show up an hour late to our event? So I think about that all the time. You're the web designer. In my case, I use uh, Zenfolio as my website, which really helps because it's pretty cookie cutter. It's easy for me to drop in images and, and change it. So I try to change my website a fair amount. But you're the web designer. I'm doing that too. Accountant, our least favorite thing to do. If we're creative people, we hate accounting. That may be a bit overgeneralized, but I don't like accounting. Um, but you gotta do it or Uncle Sam will come at you. Album designer. I'm lucky, my wife is way more creative than I am. She does all the album design. She understands how to take images and turn it into a story. So that's great that I have that advantage. Uh, shipping and receiving. 
yep, when we get those albums in or someone does a print order, I print them out on the Canon Pro 1000, package them up, yep, I'm driving to the post office and I'm dropping them off or FedEx or wherever it might be. So yeah, we're doing that too. So shipping, customer service rep, people call up and have questions and this happens all the time. The way you answer the phone is your brand. The way you talk to those customers, if you, if you meet with them, do you have a smile on your face or do you act like you're bored out of your mind, right? I love what I do and that comes through and that's really important. The last one, it's funny, I came up with 16 and I realized, wait, but I'm talking about 17 hats, I better have a 17th hat. And I realized, wait, the last one is time balancer. Because we do all of this, but I still have a family and you have to have time for your spouse or your kids or your dog or whatever, but it's important to remember that even though you're doing all of these things, you still have to have time for the family. And it's tough if you add all those up for a typical week and then you realize that there is no Monday from Friday chilling out and hanging out, you're working all the time. Here's the risks, <clears throat> and it's something I take to heart. I don't want photography to just become a job. And when I went full time as a photographer, this worried me. Is my love and my passion for the art gonna go away because it's now a job and I have to make the money to pay for my daughter's college? Yes, that's you if you're watching. Um, right, that's what we have to do. Well, I'm happy to say it hasn't. I'm still as inspired and passionate about it as the day I started. I hope to keep it that way. Um, Yes, you may have to sacrifice your weekends, and that is a risk. I hear this from my wife, who gets really frustrated because inevitably, when you get invited to, to parties with your neighbors and friends, Saturday, guess what? I'm booked for 53 Saturdays between now and 2020. So I think I have two available this year. So the wife's not thrilled by that. You have to strive to keep, keep creating better art. And this is a challenge. Because I remember when I started and I looked at images and I'm like, oh, I love this. This is a portfolio shot for my website. You know, maybe I was shooting a bar mitzvah. Well, after 200 bar mitzvahs, I've got those shots already. Like, it's hard to push yourself to take it to the next level to get something really unique. I remember the first time I laid down on the ground and I shot a picture of all the kids looking down at me. It's on my website. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Well, I've done it now like 30 times. So I have to do something really different or get a really cool ceiling above me or something to make it. To the, to the next level. And you have to handle rejection. This is a tough one uh, for me. Uh, my clients, I've had probably three clients I've shot for out of hundreds that didn't rebook me. I take that personally, it's tough. When you go, so uh, I know the, the next kid's coming up, right? And you go, well, we're, we're gonna go a different route. Ah. Like, you know, why, what did I do wrong? Right, you start questioning yourself, it's tough. It's tough, so you have to get handle that, and you have to handle it with class. Going back to the brand again, my answer is, hey, you have to do what's best for you as in your family, and I totally respect that. Tough to do, but you have to do that. The other thing that people forget, and one of the risks is there's a lot of hidden costs in becoming a photographer. Sure, we all think about the camera and the lens we need to buy, but do we think about the insurance? Oh, you want to become an LLC? That's another $1,000 a year. Oh, do you need uh, you know, a monthly service for your website? And you have to have a monthly service for internet. And you have to have a monthly service. You know. So there's all these things that add up. And so there's a lot of things that people don't think about when they're trying to start a business. So camera gear. But it's not just the camera. If you're going to shoot professionally, you probably want to have a second camera as backup. I can attest I've broken a camera um, at a shoot. Thankfully, I had a backup. This is really early on. I went to sh uh, shove a battery grip onto a camera, and I snapped off the little detector that says, is there a camera in your, uh, sorry, is there a battery in your camera? So the camera wouldn't even turn on. Whoops, good thing I had a second camera. So I carry extra lenses, I carry five flashes. So I've got extras, I've got extra batteries charged in case I go through them faster than I thought. I always think that through. Computer gear. You know, if you're gonna do your own editing, you have to have a reasonably fast computer because time is money. As I mentioned, all the, the recurring costs for websites and you know, remote backup or all those kinds of things. Insurance, travel costs, if you're gonna be traveling, all those things add up. Now, here's the thing. We're not gonna talk a ton about photos here. We're talking about business. But I don't want people 
especially online, to say, well, that's stupid. He's just saying you have to be good at business. You don't have to take a good photo. I'm not saying that. You have to take great photos. You have to separate yourself and do something that says, okay, this is a photographer, not just a picture taker, right? So you have to learn the different modes of the camera. When do you want to be shooting manual? When do you want to be shooting aperture priority? And then how do you find good light? Walking around New York City yesterday, I was watching someone uh, shooting a family picture in the worst possible place. Half sunlight, half shade, like bad background, garbage can. Like, and so you have to know the right places to shoot and find the right light. You have to know how to add light. So are you adding a flash or a reflector or a strobe? Like, you, If you don't have good light, how do you overpower the bad light that you have? And these are things that you have to inherently know because as a photographer, we'll walk into a room or a setting and they'll say, um, okay, this is what you're shooting. And you can't look at it and go, oh, I don't know how to shoot in this room. <laughs> you know, you know, a good photographer can walk into almost any environment and probably figure out a way to shoot it within a minute or two. Understanding lens choices. It's not just about the camera. What lens do you want to use and what kind of look is it going to give you? You know, I love using the Canon 70-200, it's my favorite lens, because if you're doing portraits, it slims people, you get great bokeh in the background, it's just a really, really sharp lens. That's my go-to lens. But I know when to go to a wide. I also know when I shoot wide, try not to get people on the edges, especially if they're heavier set. Get them in the middle. Like, all these things are going through my brain. I did a presentation here a couple years ago called the, I think it was the 15 things I think about every time I take a picture. And it was all the things that you have to think about in order to get a good shot. So those are things you want inherently to be in your brain. The number one thing is to re relate to, the, to your client. When I shoot for a client, I am smiling, I'm having fun, and it's not, it's not fake. I love what I do, and I make sure that they know I love what I do. Because if I'm having fun, they're having fun, what do I get back in the camera? A happy person. If you ever take a kid and you say, smile, <laughs> and I see this all the time, or you get mom behind you, that's not the smile we taught you. I, I hear it, and like, okay, and I tell mom, why don't you go get the pamphlets and put like your stuff and get your jackets to put over there, we're gonna shoot for a little bit. I always take the kid away from the parents, because I don't want that external stress. So, but I have fun, I'll dance at the party, I'll dance with grandma, I'll do whatever it takes, I have fun. I become part of the party. I insert myself into their family if I'm shooting a personal event. If I'm shooting a corporate event, I try to relate to the people who, oh, you're the business development guy? Cool, I love your products. What, I mean, like, I try to learn about them and relate to them because what do they think about at the end of the night? Most people don't think about their photographer, but I want them to, I want them to remember me. So I do whatever I can to kind of relate to them. So I'm gonna show you some of the different types of photography I do that make me money and show you a couple photos and then we're gonna get into the, to the, the, the meat of it. So I do personal events, as I mentioned, I do a lot of bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and I do weddings um, and those are a good chunk of my business. Um, I'd say maybe at least 45% of my income is from these. And I do these in the Bay, in San Francisco Bay Area. I love doing them. Uh, I have a great uh, recurring business from it, so uh, it works out well for me. I do corporate events. Um, some of it's volunteer, some of it's not. Uh, the one at the bottom is from UC San Francisco Hospital. Um, they do a, a prom every year for all the kids that can't go to prom because they're too sick. And so, uh, someone's coughing. Uh, um, but I always volunteer my time for them. So, but I do make money doing corporate events and corporations can pay very well. And I keep that in mind. The other thing I love about corporate events, they're typically not on Saturday. So I think about that in my business. If I can do something during the week, whether it's a senior portrait or a corporate event, that's great, because that's incremental money that I can make during the week and I'm not burning up a Saturday. I do uh, corporate headshots and images. Um, again, you know, I, I volunteer to do these sometimes, but I also you know, charge to them. So I've got a law office in my hometown. Uh, on uh, Next Friday I'll be there and I'll be shooting headshots for them. And that's good money. Again, I can do it on my schedule during the week. Um, and it's a great way to you know, be able to do something even when it's raining, right? So if I can't shoot out, uh, outside, I'll set up and do backdrop and do shots inside. Senior portraits, which I like to do outside, not inside. 
Um, I, I love shooting in ambient light, um, and this is a great business. And so I'm looking at what are the different niches that are out there, and someone asked me today, what type of photographer are you? And I said, no, I'm just a photographer. I don't want to be, even though I shoot and have done six Olympics, I really don't like it when people go, this is Jeff Cable, he was a sports photographer. Because I'm not. I mean, I do sports, but I do everything. And, I, and, I, and, and I'm not saying, look, I'm great at everything. I'm saying I like shooting all kinds of things. And so uh, you know, doing senior portraits is great because um, seniors are fun. They're about to you know, go to the next step of their life and go off to college. Um, and they, you know, they're, they're a little bit older and more mature than doing a 13-year-old bar mitzvah. And I like finding in learning about those people and taking advantage of like who they are. So the kid that plays baseball, okay, we gotta do pictures in your suit, but we also have to go out, let's go to the baseball field, let's get some pictures of you there. Or in the case of like my daughter, who's in the picture uh, at the top there, her best friend, they wanna do pictures together. Cool, let's do that. And let's also throw you in your outfits. Um, you know, the, the kid that's in the picture by the tree, he's a little bit more edgy. All right, so we found a graffiti wall, we shot some pictures. I found this picture where the backlighting was cool, he's got long hair, fine, let's do that. So I take each person and try to make it about them. And when I talk to a client on the phone, I always tell them, my job as a photographer is not to shoot for who I am, my job is to show who you are as a family, and or if it's for a kid, who they are. So I make it about them, and I make sure they understand that. Now landscapes, uh, I kind of joke about landscapes because I don't know how about, about making a ton of money at landscapes. I shoot mostly landscapes for the fun of it and because I love doing it. I don't make a lot of money selling these images. Um, I just enjoy it. I, I do know people who try and they go to the art shows. They generally will take a picture. This is from one of my trips here to New York to the Botanical Gardens. They'll take that and they'll pump it by another 50% saturation and try to sell it. Um, but, and I think that's a tough business. People will call me up and say, I think I want to sell landscapes. Whew, God help you, that's a tough one. Sports, sports is a tough business. It's not easy to try to make money selling sports shots because two reasons. One is they pay less than they used to because all the publications don't want to pay more because they're all struggling. And uh, so many people want, are willing to do it for free. So believe it or not, there's a lot of people that would just kill to get on the sidelines of an NFL game. They'd almost pay to do it, and a lot of people do, just for the rights to try to do it. And I get that, because it's exciting and it's fun. But what it does is that it then deteriorates the value to people who are doing it for a living. So when people say to me, I want to make tons of money in sports, I'm like, there are very few people that do that. And even though I shoot the Olympics, I don't make most of my money from shooting sports. Um, I, I should mention that our, one of the local pro teams in my area, in the San Francisco Bay Area, they're getting rid of their two photographers and going to one. That one person has to shoot all of the pro games and the minor league games and all the headshots and all the corporate stuff, and the pay is $60,000 a year. Now, for so, some of you that live in the Midwest or whatever, 60000 sounds like a lot of money. In the Bay Area, that's poverty. The median price in a house in San Francisco, I just saw on the news two days ago, $1.6 million. So 60 grand ain't gonna pay for food in San Francisco. So it's kind of interesting that that's what they're willing to pay for one person to work their butt off for an entire year. Kind of scary. For me, I also do photo tours. Um, and I shoot wildlife. Yes, you can sell some pictures of wildlife. Again, there's a lot of it out there from people. Um, you know, and it's I'm lucky and that I get to do the tours. I it's something I thoroughly love doing. Today's blog is all about w why travel is so important to me. Um, and I and I did list them here, like I did in the other presentation. These are all the tours that are coming up that that I, I'm doing. So Namibia and Botswana, um, where you've got landscapes and and cool animals to photograph. Costa Rica in the, in the rainforest, which is awesome. We're doing Croatia and Slovenia. Tanzania, again, we're doing lots of Tanzania just because the, the safaris are so amazing there. Same thing, more rainforest. And then we're gonna do India in February 2020. And so this is something where, you know, for me, I'm lucky and that I get to do these. Um, and um, it's fun to do and it does make money, but for me, this is more about the experience than even making money. 
So here's the key thing to think about in the business of photography. Great shooting is not enough. Here's one of the challenges I think that's interesting. Most people today, as I mentioned, are taking pictures with their phones or whatever. People have gotten used to mediocrity. Think about that. How many pictures are taken every day with these versus a great camera and great lens? It's gotta be like 1,000 to 1 or 10,000 to 1 or whatever. And most of my clients don't know the difference between a great picture and a good picture. So a lot of my clients say like, no, 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 you don't need to edit them. The ones we saw on the proof gallery are fine, just send us those. No way, I won't do it. I want them finished, I want them right. But what it says is people are used to no bokeh, everything's in focus, eh, mediocre backgrounds and mediocre lighting. Just a fact. We've all gotten used to it because there's so many images being pushed onto social media that are just from your phone. I'm not saying phones can't take a good picture. I'm saying that as an average, we're used to pictures that are not great. So if you're, let's say that we have two photographers, one, one's 100% amazing and the other one's 80% amazing. The guy who's 100% amazing doesn't do all the business and marketing side, he'll lose. Now you could argue this could be a 75 or 65%. And again, I'm not saying take bad pictures. I'm just saying that there are people who take outstanding stuff that still fail. So taking a good photo isn't enough to become professional. I guess you could probably say the same thing for doctors or many other businesses, right? You could be the best doctor, best surgeon in the world, but if you don't know how to run a business, you might fail. I don't know. You have to learn how to market yourself and build your brand. Now marketing's tough. Because when I say you have to market yourself, there's a difference between being confident and being egotistical or narcissistic. You don't want to come across as that. You know, I'm confident, but I know there's a lot better photographers out there, and I'm the first to admit it. And there's other people that run a business better than I do and do a lot of things better than I do. You know, I'm not one of those people that says, oh, I do it all. But I know what I'm good at, and, and I take advantage of that, and I'm confident. Um, and I'm okay with marketing myself that way. You want to be unique. In the last presentation I just did here, I talked about my Olympic photography from Pyeongchang at the Winter Olympics, and I showed images that were unique. I dragged the shutter, I did you know, motion panning, because I, I wanted to stand out from the other thousand photographers that went to the Olympics. I want someone to remember, like when I went on safari and I shot the picture of the zebra at 30th of a second handheld, 600 millimeters, both of his legs are off the ground. I want someone to go, oh yeah, 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 I remember that shot. Now, if you go on safari and you want to get a picture of a zebra, no problem. You'll get tens of thousands of them that you want to. How do you be unique and set yourself apart? And that's true in personal events, whatever I'm shooting. You got to work hard. Um, you know, you're not going to just sit back and the money's going to roll in. That's not going to happen. You also want to know where your money is coming from <laughs> and going to. So I know where most of my money's coming from, which kind of events. And, and I market to that. So I do a lot of bar mitzvahs, fine. So who goes to bar mitzvahs? A lot of Jewish people, same age kids. I make sure that I have a smile on my face when I'm shooting a bar mitzvah because there's other potential clients in that room, right? And I also wanna know where my, where my money's going. And a lot of people buy tons of equipment. Sorry, b &H. There are times when people overbuy equipment. I've done it. I bought stuff and it's still in the box from four years ago. So you wanna think about what's coming in and what's going out, because you're running a business. It's not a hobby. I mean, it might be now, but if you take it to that next step, you have to know that. Show off your work, and this goes back to what I said before about confidence. You wanna show off your best work. Don't show junk. If you took a bad picture, don't show it. But if you take a good shot, show it, and be confident. Hey, I love this picture I just took, check it out. Nothing wrong with that. Right? So, and the thing is, you are judged, and I've said this a hundred times here, you're judged by your worst work, not your best work. If you have a website, and you have, you want to start shooting weddings, and you have eight good wedding shots, and hundreds of others, put eight on your website. Don't put the others. Because you don't want someone looking at your website going, that's really nice, ooh, wow, ooh, ooh, and then ugh. You don't want ugh. So, only show your best work. Marketing is just critical. Having that good website, as I mentioned, having good images, having a clean website, keeping it fresh. I just changed mine from a black background to a white background, just kind of freshen it up a little bit. Keep it dynamic. One of the great things in Zenfolio is it's easy to change themes. 
so it didn't take more than about 10 minutes. But your website represents you. If it's clean and professional and polished, then you're viewed that way. Now, I have competition in the Bay Area that shoots a lot of events, and their website looks like it was designed in like 1989, has been changed since. That's bad. Their photos aren't even good. I know they're good for diaries. Their photos aren't even good. That's a mistake. So share your best work. Now, social media is a whole can of worms I'm not going to get too deep into, but social media, if you asked me a couple years ago, I would say it's critical. And now, with everything that's going on in social media, and you know, timing with Facebook right now under the microscope, uh, I've, had, uh, I've been watching the followers of Facebook drop as people are deleting their accounts. Um, it's getting harder and harder to get noticed on social media unless you pay. If you have an Instagram following, uh, Facebook following, uh, I was talking to Scott Kelby a couple weeks ago when I was in Tampa with him, and both of us were saying, like, we have hundreds of thousands of followers. It's hard to get even 2,000 to see what we post because Facebook and Instagram have that little button next to it that is, would you, would you like to boost that post for money? So the old days of getting people, people's eyeballs and building your brand and building your business through social media is much harder today than it's ever been. Um, stay true to your brand. Think about the brand every day. UPS used to say, tell their drivers, think of every client having a million dollars and stuck to their forehead because if you take care of that person, they're gonna tell someone and they're gonna tell someone. And if you don't take care of them, they're gonna tell even more people. I take care of every client as good as I can. I have one client right now who's asked me to re-edit images like five times. Hope they're not watching this. And it's kind of driving me crazy. Like, I've already gotten rid of the lines on your face. And now we want more lines off of our face. I'm like, you're killing me. And they're killing me. But I'm still doing it. I'm not charging them extra. Oh, actually, I might charge them a little extra. But I'm not going to make it a big deal. I'm not going to you know, call them up and go, you're driving me crazy. Right? I want 100% I want happy people. And my wife rolls her eyes at me like, why are you doing this? I'm like, because I want 100% happiness. Working hard for referrals, there is no better thing in business than referrals. They don't cost you a dime, and they're the most valuable thing you can get. So, like, I really don't advertise my business, A, because I have so many events booked I don't need to, and B, I have so many referrals coming in that I don't need to. So my advertising cost is literally less than $1,000 a year. Once in a while, I will pay to be in a pamphlet for a venue because I shoot there all the time and they're nice to me, and I know if I don't, they're going to be mad. Okay, I'll throw them a couple hundred bucks. So it's more for doing it. Be timely in responding. And, um, and this actually leads to um, what I do with 17 Hats, um, is I use 17 Hats, which is a back-end system, a service, so it's a website. And literally, when they go on and they go to my website and they say I'm interested in, and they have a little drop-down, wedding, this date, here's my name, my phone number, my email address. I get a text message on my phone, which I got yesterday, and it says, you have a new lead. I know literally the minute they're hitting that button, within probably 30 seconds or less, it's on my phone. Oh, cool, new lead. Now, I can automate a message back to them, which I generally do. Thank you for contacting us. We'll get back to you as soon as we can, whatever. Boom, they already have a commitment or something back from me. And then I need to follow up with them. It doesn't matter if I'm in Tanzania. I need to do my best to at least get back to them on email or something. Because being timely is, what again, reflecting on who you are. It doesn't matter what you're shooting. You know, you might be shooting photos for your neighbor. I still like to post that, that day or the next day their gallery. Like, I don't understand the photographers that shoot a wedding and post a, within five weeks. Bah. I mean, my de Olympic deadline's 14 minutes. So if I have to post the next day, that seems easy. So contracts and templates. Now, if you look back at old B&H videos I did six years ago, and people ask me about contracts, my answer was, I don't do them, and I don't take deposits. Life was good. Until I had a couple people cancel last minute, and then I had no money. So when it was a sideline job, that was cool. If they canceled on that weekend, I had an extra weekend with my family. Well, once you're a full-time photographer, that's a problem. A, because you lose the revenue. B, you, you may have said no to five other clients for that date, and then they cancel in three weeks before and say, oh, sorry, we're not gonna use you. That's revenue lost. So now I do contracts. I keep them really simple. I keep them straightforward. It's not a whole lot of legal mumbo jumbo. It's just enough to have a contract. Um, I, haven't, I had my attorney review it, 
and tell me if he thinks it's good enough, because again, it is pretty bare bones, and I automate as much as I can. So this is 17 hats, and I've blurred out some names here because it's a real contract, but I took a contract that I used to have copy and paste in Microsoft Word, dropped it into 17 hats. So I literally, when someone says, can you send me a contract? I go, send contract. It automatically fills in their name, the project date, everything, and I hit a button. Literally, it takes me like five seconds. It used to take 10, 15 minutes. I hit a button, it sends out. It automatically enters in all their information, if I have their address and all that, email address, boom, gone. I have different contract templates set up. One for bar mitzvahs, one for weddings. One for me to shoot, one if it's one of my second shooters shooting. Different pricing or has got their name on it. So it'll be so-and-so shooting for Jeff Cable Photography, but it'll be this person's name as the photographer. And then I just click on, okay, is it Evan to shoot, Cheryl to shoot, me to shoot, go, done. All automated. And I have different um, contracts for half-day shooting, full-day shooting, or what have you. Now, it's not to say that I don't have to do special ones if I have a corporate client. I may have to do a very different contract. But for 99% of what I do, it's literally one click. Um, the other thing on the top, and it might be hard to see, where it'll tell you when I've edited it, reviewed it, sent them reminders, or whatever. So I can look that. It's all pre-stored by the site. Now, I mentioned workflows. Um, 17 Hats has all these workflows, like, okay, if someone contacts me, uh, I need to call them back, send them pricing, send them an email, check back with them within two weeks. I don't use them. So I don't use every feature uh, of 17 Hats because that's a little too organized for me. Um, but they're there if you want to. I actually just kind of keep it in my mind just to at least get the main contact done and I can look at their record and see each time I called them or emailed them because that's stored for me. But I don't use the workflows, I, although probably should and eventually I'll have time to actually sit down and see if I can use them. But at this point I don't. What I'd like to do eventually is create something that says six months from the day, or I usually keep a gallery up for six months. So five months after I've done their event, remind them that they have one month left before the gallery comes down. So those are the things I need to do, I just haven't had time to do yet. So it's, it's, it's organizing, but it's also this photo workflow, and there's business workflow. So for photography workflow, I got it down. Like I said, my Olympic deadline is 14 minutes. So as far as downloading images, going through them, finding the best ones, getting them back to my client, I'm, I, I post same day or next day, usually before noon. Even if I've gone and shot 5,000 images, I'm really good at that. The business side, I'm not as good at, but at least I have enough that I can run the business successfully. Could I be more organized? Yeah. Some of the biggest challenges for me, and I think for a lot of people, is time management. Because we're doing so many things, and we're trying to juggle all these things in our head that have to get done to be successful, that's tough. Um, and again, I have to also work in the fact that there's a personal calendar of things as well. Keeping up with the times. You know, video is really big now. So do you shoot video? I don't. I do a little, if a client says to me, hey, the speech that we're doing for our kid is really important, can you get that in video? Yeah, I might kick the 5D Mark IV into video mode. But I tell them, if I do that, I'm not shooting, I'm just doing your video, because I can't shoot and do video at the same time, unless I grab the other camera, which I'll do sometimes. But now I'm distracted, just be aware of that. So I tell people, I'm a still photographer, I'm not a video guy. But I know, that that's important and that people are going that way. What are the times, what are the trends? Are the trends in album design? Is it very white and simple or is it pop-ups of the wedding party or whatever? You gotta know what those are. Social media is a good example. Do you put all your efforts into social media? I don't know, right now you might be banging your head against a wall. Um, keep everyone happy, tough. Like I said, I want 100% of my clients to be happy. That is not easy. There are times when you have to do things that, you know, uh, get in your car at midnight and drive over to drop something off that you forgot to do, whatever it might be. It's tough to keep everybody happy. Um, and I do automate as much as I can. And like I said, I could not run my business without, without using 17 apps. This is my calendar, which um, is in their software. And uh, the cool thing is, these are all green, so these are all on my main calendar. Anything in yellow, which is not in this month, would be if it's a lead. So there's nothing in this month that's a lead because it's already way past that. But anything that's yellow, I say, okay, I gotta follow up on those. Or someone will say to me, hey, are you available you know, May something of 2020? 
I'll see something in yellow and say, well, someone asked for that date. Let me check with them and see, can I give them first right of refusal? I have that calendar linked to Google Calendar because that way my wife and I can share it. So my wife knows if we get invited to a party on Saturday, that ain't happening. Um, so she can look at the calendar and it synchronizes automatically, which is kind of cool. It doesn't synchronize to Apple's calendars, unfortunately, so I do it through Google Calendar. Okay, um, let me go back here. So the other thing I do, and this is fairly new, is I've automated a lot of my email templates. So I have a lot of clients that call me up and say, what's your price for this, you know, for shooting up a wedding? Well, I've got one that says, as promised, here's the pricing for you. So literally I go to that, it automatically fills in their name and everything else, and my pricing is pretty standard. And literally I do that and I hit send and it goes out. And they're shocked that literally 30 seconds after we're having the discussion, they have an entire email with pricing and links on my website and all already done. <laughs> And a lot of times, let's say it's for a bar mitzvah, I have a line in there that says, oh, and by the way, if you want any um, references on other vendors to use, like great photo booths, DJs, coordinators, here's a web page I've designed with all the best ones. And I put that in there. So I feed them additional information. But I don't have to add it, it's already in there. I say it, click, it's already out. And I've got templates in here, and it's hard for me to even read them, but um, I've got stuff like contract not signed. So that's one that says to them, hey, I sent you a contract, but I haven't heard back from you. Or I've got ones that say, hey, I sent you a bill and you haven't gotten back to me. Which, by the way, as I told you before, when I ran the business and forgot to bill people, this is really handy if I could run a report and say, who's, who's outstanding and hasn't paid their bills yet? All of this is automated. And you can create your own templates. Again, I'm not saying you have to use 17 hats. It's what I use, and it just keeps me organized. This is a, a something I used to use Google. So Google has free... Um, things where you can create forms and questionnaires and all that. And so I used Google's uh, free stuff for a long time for doing my documents. 17 Hats actually has it built in. So this is my mitzvah questions. And it comes up and it says like, you know, what type of, oh, actually, take it back. This is for leads. What type of photography you're interested in? And I put down the drop down: wedding, bar mitzvah, personal event, family portraits, senior portraits, whatever. What's the date of the event? What's your name? What's your email address? What's your phone number? And I've created that. And then what it does, it gives me um, some HTML code, which I don't even know what the hell that means. I just go select all, copy, take that, put it on my website, paste, and then it creates the form right on my website. And again, when they fill it out, it automatically sends me the text message to my phone, does all, it's really cool. Um, so here's, here's what it looks like in the design phase of that questionnaire, and when the client gets it, it looks like that. So they do all the formatting for me, and again, it looks really professional. This is a mitzvah question, so it's, what's your family name? What's the name of the kid? Tell me the other family members' names. Home address, contact, temple name, what time is your service? Do you want the family pictures, yes or no? I used to have to, when I talked to a client, copy and paste that text from a Word doc and then paste it into emails. Then when they reply back, I'd have to take that and paste it in other places. This automatically gets stored right in their record in 17 hats, so I don't have to worry about it. The other cool thing is that um, they have an app on the phone and their app is horrible. Don't use their app. I, I even called them and said, like, this is the worst app. Like, it just, I hated it. But as of two weeks ago, they made their website mobile. So now I don't use the app. I just go to their website on my phone, and it's actually really good. So now I can see I have an introductory phone call I've got to make. I've got to follow up on this bar mitzvah. Um, and here's three new leads that just come, came in all on the phone, which is really nice. Um, I've got the calendaring there. Uh, the other thing I love is I can pull up the notes. So when I'm talking to a client, I type in notes. Okay, so who's the mitzvah kid? Oh, Julie. What's Julie into? Well, she likes uh, drama and uh, she plays soccer. This is important. This is going to allow me to relate to her. You know, maybe she's really into sports and I can use my Olympic background. Like, hey, I just shot Michael Phelps. I know you're into swimming. Whatever. I, so I, mom and dad's names. When I drive to an event, I drive there and go, Julie, Bob, Daniel. Like, I remember the names like over and over and over. So I get there. I go, hey, Julie, can you get closer to Bob? Right? So all those notes are in here. And, I, and I'm able, I like the fact that now I can just pull them up on my phone because the app just didn't do that easily. Um, I also can pull up contracts and stuff all from the phone. It's crazy how all this is at your, like in this one device in your pocket. And it, may, it actually makes me, me, somewhat organized. 
My wife is laughing right now if she's watching. I'm not an organized person. This actually makes me organized. It's, it's, it's a godsend to me. Ugh. Ugh. I hate accounting. I've never been good at accounting. Um, you know, things like paying taxes and figuring out how much to pay in taxes. I, I, we have an accountant, but, but you still have to do your own accounting because your accountant still comes to you and says, well, how much did you make? How much did you pay in taxes? You have to know that stuff. Um, this was by far my weakest point and still is the weakest point of my business. Um, I am horrible with finances. So, uh, and I think that's true for a lot of people who are creative. We're not good at financing. Stuff. So it's a necessity for you because you're running a business. It's also a necessity because the government wants your money. And if you don't know how much you paid in sales tax, you don't know how much to pay in sales tax to the state or whatever it might be. You have to know that stuff. So um, one of the cool things about 17 Hats, and I don't think I put it in here, but uh, I've got a breakdown that shows like how much money this quarter have I made from, actually I, made, I think it is in here, from you know, mitzvahs, from weddings, from wedding albums, mitzvah albums, senior portraits, whatever. And, and I would never have been able to do that in the past. This is, um, the, the screenshot on the left side there is, um, is my documents. And so typically my documents are invoices. And so my favorite thing to do is go to this folder and say, show me outstanding things, because they don't tell me who owes me money. And then I can also go through and look at all those invoices and know what's paid right in front of me. This is actually that um, document. I, I forgot. I did put it in there. Um, but this is a profit loss report. And now, when you say profit loss report to me, normally my eyes would glaze over. Like in the past uh, four years ago, before I use this, I go to my accountant and say, so how much money did you make this year? I'm like, well, I think. And they're like, no, 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 no. Don't say I think. We need to know how much money you made and how much you paid and all that. And about what were your expenses? I'm like, I don't know. Here's a bunch of receipts. Um, now I can actually run a profit loss report. It'll show me how much I'm making in mitzvah photography, corporate work, weddings, sponsor stuff, books, albums. Um, what's my cost of goods? We, uh, what are my expenses? And the cool thing is I have it linked right to my credit card. So all my credit card charges from my Amex go into 17 Hats. So if I book a flight in United, it automatically goes in and gets tagged as, as uh, travel. So I don't have to actually do all that. So once you categorize things, it knows where they go. It's, 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 it's quite good. So again, it makes me organized. As I mentioned before, you want to differentiate. Um, and I thought, I, I look at this industry and, and I see the amount of people who want to become photographers or think they're photographers. We, we call them uh, people with cameras, right? You've all, you all know people as very, like, well, we'd have you shoot it, but you know, my uncle's got a DSLR. Good Lord. And you know, now he's telling me, I go, well, let's see how he does at your party, which is your, at ISO 3200. If he knows what he's doing, he might get, does he have remote flashes? They have no idea. He's a little pop up flash. That'll be fine, right? Um, you better be better than that. You better be nicer. The one thing I hate, I've said this before, I hate it when people walk around and they look like they're bored out of their mind. As a photographer, you should be having fun. You should be excited about what you're creating. Because remember, if you're shooting something, you're, you're creating history, you're capturing it, you're, you're a historian, that's really important. It doesn't matter if you're shooting a wedding, you could be shooting a landscape, well, landscapes change. But think about what you're creating as art and take it to heart when you're doing it. Shoot better, be faster at responding, be faster at posting, be faster at delivering. One of the things I do when I shoot an event is uh, I've got a, the Canon Pro 1000 right there. I'll shoot the mitzvah in the morning if it's a mitzvah and I shoot from 9 a.m. till about one. Once the lunch is going, I'll leave. I'll go home for a couple hours, parties. I have to be there around 5.30 to the party. I've got time to go through all the images. I find the best picture of the family or the kid, print it on the Pro 1000 on beautiful paper, mat it, frame it, and bring it to them as a gift. Most people can't do that. So it differentiates me from all those other people. And the people walk in the party, they go, wait, wait, wait. Is that from today? I go, yeah. Wow. Right? And they'll do a same day slideshow. I've already gone through all 1,200 images we shot in the morning, portraits and the service, and I have the best ones looping during the party. And people are like, these are great. Can I have your card? 
there you go. Referrals, didn't cost you a dime. You get to rent your projector for 250 bucks. You're actually making money doing it, and you're getting your word out there. But I do, you gotta be quick. If someone orders images from me, a print order, and it takes me more than about five days, I hate it. I wanna deliver as quick as I can. And by the way, I always over deliver. Even for a print order, if someone orders like two four by sixes and just paid $10 for shipping, I always give them extras. Because I'm like, you know, it really wasn't, the shipping minimum is $10. That's really designed for people to buy more images. You only bought one four by six or two, and I threw in a couple extras for you. And what I'll do is, if I look at a picture, and it's a picture of a couple, I'll find that another picture of that couple from the party in the evening. I might even print that, edit that, print it, and, and send that to them. Or if they're with their kids and I have a cute picture of the kids, I'll throw that in. It's always over-delivering. Because what sticks in their mind, that does. Be passionate. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about what I do. That passion comes through, and you can't put a price tag on passion. And if you're competing against other photographers, and you, if you're a professional, you will be, you want to be passionate. When I was here, I flew into New York a day early. I shot for a corporate client at the Olympics, never met them. I flew in a day early just to go for half an hour over to their corporate headquarters to introduce myself as a face-to-face -face meeting. And, and she goes, what's your agenda? I go, I don't have an agenda. I just want to meet you face-to-face. -face. That's it. And I'll get out of your hair if you're really busy. Well, I only have 15 minutes. Fine, I'll come for 15 minutes. Well, 15 minutes turned into 45. We had a great meeting and I left. I want a face-to-face. -face. I want that person to remember me so that when time comes to hire someone at the next Olympics, they go, oh, let's, let's hire Jeff. Not, who is that guy? I want them to remember me. This is one I get bombarded with uh, on email. What should my pricing be? Or what is your pricing? Now, I don't give my pricing out to people. It's not even on my website. I find that putting pricing on the website, I, I don't want to do that for two reasons. One, I don't need my competition to know, although they might already. More importantly, I don't want to give pricing to someone until I've talked to them. Because I want them to understand who I am and how I'm going to treat them. I want that first and foremost, and price should be secondary. And it's really funny, if I get a, a call from the mom, it's always like, oh, I love your work, it's so beautiful, it brought me to tears. And we talk for half an hour, and they say, oh, by the way, what's your pricing? If I get a call from dad, what's your pricing? Right? So, I, that's the way guys are. I'm, you know, my wife like, what do you think of this dress? How much was it? It's just the way we're built. It's the way we are. But I want, to, I want to try to talk about other things other than price first, so they understand the quality of what I'm bringing them. Then we'll talk price. So I don't put it online. So here's, here's my answer, which tends to be more questions, back to people when they say, what should my pricing be? Here's the question to ask. How good is your work? Are you a great photographer, good photographer, or are you just starting out? Here's the thing. When I started out, my work was okay. It clearly isn't what it is today. And today, and 10 years from now, hopefully I'll be better than I am today. But it's a growth. So I, can't, I couldn't have charged 10 years ago what I charge today. I wasn't as good. So you have to figure out where you are. And then you have to figure out, okay, what's your demographic? Are you shooting for people who have an average income of $30,000? Or are you shooting for people who are in venture capital and have a net worth? You know, if you look at the, they say, meet us at our house. And you go into Zillow and you find out their house is worth $23 million. Okay, well, that's a different client than the person who's making $25,000 a year. Um, I'm not saying stock your clients, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> know, know your competition. What are they charging? They want to know what you're charging. Uh, you know, there are the people who start at the bottom, Craigslist. Yeah, I can get someone to shoot a wedding for 300 bucks. Or you can get someone to shoot your wedding for 100,000. So you want to know who the competition is and know where they're at. Now, in my case, I've been shooting for almost 15 years. I don't have to worry about the Craigslist people. My clients, if they ask price and that's all they care about, I know they're not my client. Or if they, if they go, well, we just want someone to cover for two hours. I go, well, here's the problem. You want me to block an entire Saturday, so I'm giving up business to somebody else to shoot for you for two hours. Sorry, my day rate is this. If you want to pay it for just two hours, that's fine, but this is what it's going to be. And you have to hold true to that. But know what the competition's at. I know in the Bay Area that there are people that are shooting bar mitzvahs for $1,200, $1,500, entry-level guys just starting out, and there's people at the high end. I tend to be at the high end. Um, 
Again, we talked about the brand, how important that is. Supply and demand. Think about that. You know, and I think about this every day. So if you think that pricing is easy for me, it's not. Um, because even though I've been doing this for a long time, I'm constantly struggling with the whole value of what I'm delivering and how hard it is. For those people who, how many people here have shot an event like a wedding or a bar mitzvah, like a personal event? It's grueling, right? Like the next day, you feel like you got hit by a truck. It's tough. I play ice hockey. I get more sore shooting an event all day than I do playing hockey. It's grueling. You're going for like eight, nine hours, mental stress, physical stress of holding camera bodies and running around to get the shot. And you know, it's taxing. And so what is that worth? Well, I have a rate that I charge. And I've been tempted, like, should I at some point double my rate? and weed out all the people who don't want to pay it and just shoot half as much and make just as much money? I don't know. And these are things I have to figure out. Supply and demand. I look at it, okay, I've got 53 events booked. That's a lot of events. And I have double, triple people asking for the same dates and I have to say no. Should I be charging more? The argument would probably be yes. But I also don't want to char raise my prices to the point where I don't get business. That's a tough balance to figure out. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you I have the answer, because I don't. But it's it's something that we all have to have to grapple with. This year I raised my rates by 10%, okay. But it's not a lot, but like, what can I, what can I get away with? I don't know. No one yet has balked about the 10%, which makes me wonder if I should have done 20%, I don't know. So this isn't something I have the answer for, but these are the things, the points I think which you need to think about for your pricing to figure out where you need to be. And again, supply and demand is if you're getting booked so much, that means maybe you, it's time to take your prices up. The end result is this. You need to enjoy what you do. If you don't enjoy it, I always tell people, get out of the business. And I'm gonna be the first one to do it. The minute it becomes a job and I don't like it, I will leave, I will stop shooting. Because I really feel like to do photography, where we are not only, I should have added a psychiatrist. <laughs> Because we have to be, when someone's stressed out, when you're doing a wedding, and the bride is freaking out because she has a small rip that no one's gonna see, it is our job to diffuse them, right? When the kid's nervous because they're about to do their mitzvah, and it's our job to go, you know what? No one in the room really speaks Hebrew. If you mess it up, no one's gonna know. Smile, have fun up there, whatever. Like, it's our job to do that. I gotta add that to that list. We're psychiatrists too. So, like, our job is to enjoy it because if we're not enjoying it, they sense it. I tell this to all my clients. I want you to stress about the caterer. I want you to stress about the venue. I want you to stress about the DJ, not the photographer. Because you know what, I've done this a bunch of times, we're good. And so when the family shows up, which happened three weeks ago, so I said nine o'clock is what time we start shooting because the service is at 10. What time did the family show up? 9.40. Did I stress? No, because if I stress, they stress. So what I do, yeah, you know you're late, we're good, we'll make it work. And I, I work like double rate, moving as fast as I could to get the shots and then we shot some other stuff at the end. After the service, we went back in and got some more stuff. That is the way it is. You know what? Not my fault they showed up 40 minutes late, but if I sit there and make them pay for it mentally, then I'm not gonna, they're not gonna trust me and we're not gonna have the relationship I don't want for the rest of the night. So that's important. Keep pushing yourself. And like I said before, I don't claim to be the best photographer in the world. Um, I work hard. I push myself every day to do something better and different. And it's not um, for any other reason than to challenge myself. And it's really not even for business. It's, I mean, I want to stay current. Um, and I do get the newer camera bodies. If I find that I can shoot differently or better with it, great. It's really just to kind of push myself to keep myself creatively excited. And as I mentioned, I got a picture of my family there. That was my daughter's idea for our family portrait right before the Olympics. She was, let's go USA stuff. I said, good idea, it was cute. Um, so that's my family. And one of the things that it's really hard to do, and, and, and admittedly very difficult for me because I'm a workaholic, because I love my job, so it's not really a job, is I spend a lot of time doing it. 
And unfortunately, I'm one of those people, if you could tell with my brain, that I'll sit there with the kids and my wife and we're watching TV and my brain's thinking, I really need to get another blog done. I haven't blogged in four days, whatever. And oh, I need to edit those images for that client. Oh, I didn't get back to that lead. Like, I don't know if you guys have that, where your brain's just going, right? So it's hard to relax. So for me, maintaining a balance is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get better at it. I'm reading books again. I stopped reading books for like 10 years. I'm like, I don't have time to read a book. Now I'm actually trying to relax a little bit more and read a book. But that balance is tough. So anyway, this is um, how you get a hold of me. Um, that's my website, just jeffcable.com. And I do have a page, as I was mentioning in the last presentation, called Jeff Steals, where I've uh, worked with a lot of my sponsors to get deals for you guys as well. Um, and 17 Hats is actually on there. And um, they've got, I think, and I, and I should have looked it up, I think 17 Hats is like a couple hundred dollars, 250 a year, I think it is. Um, it's, you know, for 20 bucks a month, it's a godsend to me. And also, by the way, something I didn't mention, it's a write off because the business expense. So think about that as you're running your business. Think about your write-offs, because you can write off leasing a car if you're in a full-time photographer, you all your camera equipment, your insurance, health insurance sometimes. Think about all that, too. If you have any questions online, fire them on social media. If you want to email me or whatever, that's fine. Um, check out the blog. Put your email address in the blog. It's easier, because that way every time I blog, you'll get it. I do, by the way, when I blog, I put down what settings I'm using. I talk about how I shot. I don't hold anything back, because I'm not like one of these guys who goes, like, I'm not going to tell you my tricks. Um, so feel free to check that out. And thanks for coming. Everybody have fun, learn something. <laughs> <laughs>